Okay. Then... And I have a once in a lifetime invitation for you. Would you like to travel to? Would you enjoy earning more than your peers? What about specialized training and networking opportunities that will help you advance? your career faster towards success. Members of AACE International enjoy these benefits and much, much more. AACE gives its members the tools they need to prosper. From electronic magazines and newsletters to our series of professional development webinars, members benefit from specialized expert knowledge. We host online communities to allow members to network, post questions, discuss topics, and provide professional development. Our members have 24-7 access to world-class resources, AACE's body of knowledge, and virtual library. Members receive discounted rates for conferences, continuing education seminars, certifications, professional development presentations, and AACE publications. AACE arms our members with the technical tools and expertise to complete projects on time and on cost, while meeting investment and operational goals. We have been the leader in the cost and management industry since 1956, with members in 100 countries and over 80 local sections. Success is not a big step in the future. Success is a small step taken right now. Find out more at web.aacei.org forward slash membership and join AACE International today. Good grammar and spelling are important, but if you want to write essays that inspire... Hi. We believe it's fulfilling to enhance your professional skills and knowledge. And also we find uh, dialogue and mentoring are key to improving our professional capability. We believe all business opportunities and project portfolios uh, can benefit from effective and proven project management and return on investment estimating methodologies, of which cost engineering and analysis are major contributing components. Further, as professionals, we believe we should improve return on investment as the project progresses through the rigor of front-end loading through execution and to operations. We act on these tenants, we believe, through our regular events, seminars, networking and mentoring opportunities and our excellent professional recommended practices 
and formal certifications round out the core deliverables to the project management community. So that's why I am AACE and we look forward to welcoming you and working with you in support of your professional development. So, uh, hi everyone, welcome to uh, our monthly talk uh, and webinar. Today um, is the Lean Construction Practice uh, Implementation at Public Works Authority by Ahmed Al Ansari. Uh, my name is Saad Hagazi, uh, and I will be moderating today's session with Ahmed. So, before we speak, uh, just let me introduce the uh, making some housekeeping first. Uh, we are recording the events. Uh, we have already made uh, this one uh, live stream in YouTube. Uh, there will be a certificate of attendance to the attendees. It will be coming uh, after the events. Uh, please be patient a little bit if you have not received it uh, uh, on time uh, because people are working on a voluntary basis and sometimes the amount of people are really massive to produce. Last time we had produced around 200 or 300, I think five. 300, 400 certificate, and it took it, it will be taking a while from the uh, the board to issue it, to sign it, to send it to every one uh, of you. Uh, you can use the chat um, uh, to uh, to send us something if you want. Uh, all the questions and answers uh, would be at the end, so you can start writing now on the QA uh, button uh, at any time. Um, Ahmed will be taking all the questions at the end, and it will be answered. Uh, if any question unanswered uh, because of the number, uh, we may ask Ahmed to uh, answer it on a separate note. Uh, let me introduce you to the, um, the board of 2021-2022. Uh, so um, I'm sure that you're familiar with the faces, so need, no need to mention them again. Uh, we had been doing some successful uh, media and marketing um, I think the past few months is thanks to our uh, colleague who has been doing some kind of um, uh, publication. So we have been appearing news for a few times. So uh, without going further on, uh, on ACE, let me introduce uh, Ahmed to you. Uh, so Ahmed Al Ansari, he is the technical office manager of Ashgal. Ahmed started in 1984 at Qatar uh, fertilization company, Kafko, uh, for almost 13 years uh, from a mechanical technician to a mechanical project engineer. In 1997 was joined uh, the Water Projects Department at Ministry of Electricity and Water, which uh, he became the head of the department in 1999. In 2001, Ahmed moved to Qatar National Olympic Committee as the program leader responsible for planning and delivery of some 32 prestigious uh, sports facilities and projects for Doha 2006 Asian Games. In 2006, he was the managing director of Lagoon Qatar providing multi-disciplinary uh, dis uh, engineering and construction services. Uh, and in 2013, he joined the Public uh, Works uh, Authority. Uh, in, and now he is in charge of the President, uh, President Technical Office. Mm -hmm. uh, Ahmed has a university degree in mechanical engineering, uh, a master degree in project management uh, and construction, uh, a master of law in construction law and arbitration. And he is a charter construction manager as well as uh, a fellow of the charter member uh, for various uh, international uh, professional institutes. So um, I will leave it to Ahmed now. So uh, I will stop sharing my uh, screen and I will be asking Ahmed to uh, join me. Ahmed, uh, welcome. And uh, as they say, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Saad. It's a really great pleasure and an honor to be with you, uh, folks. And I hope you will enjoy my talk uh, uh, this evening. So let me stop my video and my... Okay, can everybody see the presentation slide? Yes, we can see okay, it. That's, that's great. Well, uh, as you can see, uh, the title of my talk this evening is the construction practice and implementation uh, at Ashgal. Many of you, I would assume, know uh, what is the definition of lean, what is it, what lean reconstruction is uh, about. There are many different definitions, uh, you know, made up by various uh, 
authors, uh, but uh, this is probably the most uh, appropriate and simple one I found out of my readings. It's basically a design and execution methodology to minimize waste. So basically lean management, lean construction is about minimizing waste in any construction of processes, materials and effort in order to generate the maximum uh, value. Now, the big question I have for all of you, uh, what is the real value out of the bed we make, out of the uh, you know, construction projects we uh, deliver? This uh, small statement was made by someone called Eric Alstom. I believe he's a Swedish. Uh, he states and asserted that real value is not the low bed on a high cost design, but it is the low true cost on the right design. Many people complain here that sometimes we make wrong decisions by always going for the lowest uh, bed, which may not necessarily be the right choice. And we have encountered many problems due to some choices like this. But if this statement is followed, and then I think we can always get you know, the best value of delivering our jobs. Now, as I said, what are the common construction uh, wastes that we may uh, go through during any construction process? Now, there are many, many wastes, but I have summarized them into those seven or eight items. Overproduction and building ahead of time. Uh, the waiting time for the next operation from an operation to the next one, from an activity to the next, uh, the next one. Sometimes it takes a long time, especially if we go through sequential uh, processes. Now, in the processes uh, uh, we follow, there are lots of ways, for instance, and sometimes unnecessary. We do uh, activities that are not necessarily related to the optimum uh, you know, uh, utilization of uh, the effort on what we uh, deliver. We see many duplications, for instance, and overlapping. And it happens sometimes we uh, deliver some inappropriate operations that may not necessarily be related to the work we uh, deliver. It could be something that, uh, uh, you know, uh, like a luxurious things that we do not necessarily need. In construction sites, we do notice in our uh, construction uh, sites, for instance, lots of material stocking and inventory, which proven to be space occupying and uh, very costly to uh, uh, manage and administer as well. There are many unnecessary mo uh, motions and actions in our uh, activities. And sometimes we do perform some works so that tend to be uh, defected and needs to be uh, redone. So that's basically a waste. So we need to ensure that uh, whatever job we deliver has to be done to perfection uh, in order to avoid any rework. And last but not least, the unused human capital. Unfortunately, it happens sometimes we have uh, some of the jobs overstaffed or some of the jobs understaffed. So it's very important that we make maximum utilization of human resources when it comes to delivering our jobs. Just use them when uh, needed, basically. Now, but uh, uh, where are the main targets of uh, you know uh, applying lean construction to our uh, construction projects uh, at Ashka? We aim primarily to achieve better cost control, where we can only you know spend money uh, when needed and spend where applicable at the right time. This is something very uh, important. Sometimes we do perform assessment of money spent, and I'm afraid that we have noticed uh, in some of our reports that money has been uh, overspent in some cases, unfortunately, but regrettably, in many cases, underspent, which uh, led you know, uh, subsequently to short of cash flow to uh, contractors affecting very much their performance on site. Now, again, we need to achieve the best utilization of the human and plant resources, as I said. So it's very important that we maintain high level of the human and plant resource control in our construction sites, where we employ and hire people and use material or plant when needed. So by the time they finish, we can always release them. Operation control, this is something very important. 
it's very important to go for the right procurement method and right uh, procurement, uh, selection of the right procurement strategy for delivering uh, our job. And we do things just in time. Information control, this is something very important. Information plays an important role in decision-making process and deciding on anything related to this exercise. So by having the right information uh, gathered and collected and reported at the right time, we can always make the right decisions uh, at the right time and we need it. Now, I gave this uh, just an example of uh, the project, uh, you know, uh, life cycle, and uh, the, the, this is a standard uh, process of uh, project development. Uh, this is basically what generated by uh, RIVA. Uh, many of you, I believe, uh, know the Royal Institute of uh, Architects in the UK. This is a standard project development process. So what happens uh, at the pre-stage, we always have noticed that the design teams to certain, or if we say to great degree, are almost isolated from the construction people, and the other way around, obviously. So what happens the design people perform their tasks, then but when they finish, they prepare the tender documents, so the job goes for tender, and then when it is awarded, goes for construction, where the construction teams not necessarily were involved at the design phase. So the bigger question here is, can we establish better and stronger relationship between design and construction? construction? So we need to achieve that. So what we've done, we looked into this process and we have identified the shortfalls, the drawbacks at both stages. So at design stages, we have found out certain factors uh, internally, obviously, that affected the good uh, performance and production of quality design work. So it just happens in some of our jobs put into the market, there were some deficiencies uh, in relation to the type of reference uh, or the RFP in generally. Okay, the specifications may not necessarily be very, very, very well uh, identified and defined in the design work itself. There were some mistakes, for instance. So the scope of the service at the end of the day, there were many things missing in that. So uh, one of the major problems uh, we took, uh, we found out about is the possibility of open-ended design work related to design. It just happened uh, that things are designed and then uh, redesigned uh, a few times leading to many uh, repeat work. And this is obviously considered to be great waste and the uh, design of process and proven to be, unfortunately, not very cost effective. Again, the quality of the design needed to be controlled. It's very important that when we work in any design, we engage and involve the uh, right people to come up with uh, a good quality design that covering all traits uh, and elements of uh, uh, design work. Now, poor integration of design elements and uh, relevant documentation. Uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, something that would lead definitely to lots of problems afterwards at the uh, post stage when it comes to construction, when you would expect some clashes. So this is something that we have clearly identified and taken certain measures to overcome. Now, the hierarchy of the decision-making process of a design work was also uh, a bit of a problem. Who we'll finally decide on the best design? Uh, the thing is, when the design team, for instance, work on something, it, uh, it goes uh, further up, escalated to the head of the department, and then probably to the manager or a director. And every time it goes to somebody, you know, you end up with you know, some changes, and uh, the final decision making on, on, on this could be jeopardized with delays. So uh, we needed to uh, put a limit on that. So it stopped somewhere for the final decision making to be asked. Uh, again, uh, uh, there was there, there were lots of uh, shortfalls in, in assessment of uh, design constructability and uh, realistic cost estimates. So it just happened that when some jobs been estimated uh, for X amount of uh, uh, money, for instance, and later on when it went to the market for pricing, it it received two X 
or maybe sometimes uh, underestimated as well. At, uh, uh, you know, uh, considering the external factors, uh, it was very important uh, to consider the planning uh, permission uh, and uh, building permit because uh, the process and procedures to obtain planning permissions and building permit could be prolonged unnecessarily by external stakeholders, utilities, and the authoritative approvals could sometimes take uh, so long. So this is something that has in the past affected our performance. So we needed to look at that and how we can tackle them. Stakeholder coordinations and managing the end user. Oh, this, this, this is one of the major problems we're encountering. We have many, many stakeholders we need to coordinate with and consider the needs and requirements. And when it comes to end user, obviously end user are gonna enjoy the use of whatever facility is getting built and delivered to them. So it was very important for us to engage them as early as possible. Now, we needed to also uh, consider any changes to the laws and the regulations. Uh, at construction stage, some of the internal factors, uh, there were a bit of poor communications and undefined roles and responsibilities of those different parties involved to a construction contract. And uh, regrettably, uh, some of uh, obviously uh, uh, problems we always encounter on a daily basis that lack of coordination and collaboration among the uh, parties to uh, contract where, uh, you know, uh, the parties tend not to uh, work uh, as one team. And uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the, 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 the blame game, uh, you know, uh, proven to be a common practice within our construction uh, projects every time we uh, face a problem. So we needed to uh, look at that and it was very important for us to tackle that. And this happened also at post stage, you come across many design changes that are due to employer uh, requirements or changes, or sometimes due to technology change or law change, uh, whatever. So, so uh, unfortunately, it due also to many missing things, uh, many site instructions and variation orders are issued. Uh, the decision making process again, uh, that was one of the big dilemmas we are encountering where some decisions are unnecessarily, uh, you know, withheld. And, and uh, you know, the, the, the phenomenon of prolong, uh, prolonged decision making affecting the progress uh, on site. This is something that needed also to be tackled. And of course, when it comes to uh, general terms and conditions of uh, contracts, uh, people uh, complain, many contractors, especially internationals, complain that our uh, condition of contracts are quite rigid, single-sided, very yielding, and very biased. We needed to look at those conditions as well and try to balance them. Obviously, the dispute resolution of practices and, contract, uh, and contractual provisions in relation to dispute resolutions uh, definitely not the best, where uh, whenever the dispute is unresolved amicably, uh, you know, uh, by the different parties, it goes to court. And if uh, any dispute goes to court, it takes many years to get resolved. Some of the external factors we have encountered as well in the changing market conditions. Sometimes you get good contractors, and sometimes you do not get good contractors who are capable to deliver a certain type of niche type. Uh, uh, Jobs, for instance, and uh, some contractors could be uh, overloaded, you know, with jobs. If you, you may risk giving them more work, so they may not perform well. And over the uh, past few years, uh, you know, when the COVID started, especially, uh, there were uh, lots of lack of resources, and uh, you know. Uh, when it comes to importing uh, labor from overseas, we have faced a great deal of uh, difficulties and problems in having the right labor or the right skills. Then, uh, when it comes to the supply chain, you cannot always have uh, excellent, reliable uh, suppliers. So there's always a you know, risk of having uh, you know, unreliable uh, suppliers into the market who may not necessarily uh, you know, provide, uh, you know, provide you with the right services on time on a steadily uh, basis. And obviously the rates in the market keeps changing. And obviously uh, the technology is advancing on a daily basis, which pushes us sometimes to consider uh, new methods, new technologies, 
that would lead obviously to uh, you know uh, either additional or uh, saving uh, money to the end user. Now, uh, looking into uh, the process uh, of design and construction, uh, this is something that uh, I have stated earlier as common uh, waste, but uh, these are the most, uh, let me say, common waste we have noticed in our uh, design and construction uh, process. There are a great deal or great level of production of activity, the waiting time, you know, from uh, an operation to the next one, again, that sometimes taking so long. The loss of waste in our process is very bureaucratic, very rigid, so we need to uh, simplify that by coming up with the layering of certain processes and actions. And uh, similarly, that's applicable to operations, uh, you know, uh, you know, where many inappropriate operations or processing are uh, adopted, we needed to obviously look at those and how to eliminate them or minimize them. And when it comes to construction sites, there are many unnecessary transportations uh, happening from place to uh, another uh, by, uh, you know, uh, performing lots of uh, transportation activities unnecessarily. So it was very important to perform those transportations only when needed on time. Uh, similarly, that applies to warehousing on uh, site. As I said earlier, uh, some of the construction sites you know, occupy a great deal of spaces, as a lay down areas, or, you know, uh, storing, where simply materials can be supplied when needed. And that also applies to uh, other actions and motions inside. And as I said earlier, many of the jobs not done properly from first time and led to repeat work. And similarly, you know, no proper utilization of the vehicle. Now, the main objective for us was to propose suitable model uh, for integration of uh, design and construction through lean thinking. So by doing this, we would obviously, uh, you know, achieve the uh, uh, following goals. We always uh, tend to enable uh, end users to effectively uh, accomplish their goals by better project prevention and delivery. They are the end user, so we have to get them as engaged as early as possible, so we can meet their needs and sign off, basically on their needs and requirements. So they do not come back to us later on with changes unless they uh, you know, take the needful provisions and uh, actions to uh, raise needful funds in case of any additional cost. We try also to uh, deliver our jobs on time within budget, uh, something very important for us. And then it's very important also to make well-informed business decision at all levels. Importantly, we need to reduce risk potential and increase opportunities. And obviously, we needed to establish and enforce collaboration, trust, credibility, honesty, reliability, and certainty into the project and development environment. This is a very challenging item, I must admit. It's not an easy thing. It has never been an easy thing to achieve, to be honest, no matter whatever efforts we uh, performed in order to bring different parties closer. Uh, to work uh, as a team, inspiring, inspiring uh, trust, but due to different cultures and the regime we have, the system we have, we are still encountering great challenges and difficulties in having a smooth, what we call integrated project delivery based on collaborative relationship among the different parties to contract. And then whatever system we come up with, it needs to be sustainable that doesn't change with the change of people. So it was very important for us to build a system that is quite uh, easy to follow, but sustain the different changes of the ecosystem, the internal environment and the external environment. And also we encouraged everybody to uh, you know, uh, believe in uh, continuous uh, learning. Unfortunately, not many people into CPDs and continuous learning. So that culture and education needed to be built uh, and uh, 
not force, but persuade people to believe in, in, in upskilling their you know, uh, knowledge and skills to be able to adapt to the uh, advancing technology into the market. Now, the main motive is basically, as I said, uh, better cost control, where money uh, will only be spent when needed, they're applicable at the right time. And we needed to employ and hire resources only when required. And after they've been uh, uh, utilized and delivered their jobs, and there's no more need for them, we just release, release them. It just happened in one of the cases I have come across just very recently, one of the uh, our general engineering consultant was asked to provide supervision to staff to a construction site where the construction contract site hasn't been signed. It was crazy. So the consultant was forced to provide the personnel to staff and we as a job paid for them for doing absolutely nothing. So that is crazy. Even the consultant uh, itself advised us not to provide the staff of the project team, unfortunately, because the contract was signed, asking to provide the staff just sitting there on the construction side without doing anything. This is one. Uh, procure and build just in time. Uh, again, uh, due to the nature of our construction contracts, a contractor can enjoy harvesting uh, money as early as possible by opening jobs and wait for some time until material provided. Okay, and they put them in place rather than, for example, going for opening a trench before the material allows to site a week earlier. Okay, then lay down the uh, pipe, for instance, lay down the pipes and the trenches and do the backfilling within a short period of time. So they go for excavations the, 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 simply because by performing uh, that task, uh, opening the trenches, you will get paid. Some money for doing that job. Regardless, if it stays, if it stays three months open, risking lives, uh, you know, and uh, harming the environment. Uh, so we needed to uh, also uh, tackle these things by coming up with, uh, you know, uh, the principles of uh, uh, lean construction, apply them to our construction contracts. And obviously, we needed to uh, consider use of uh, efficient software tools at both design and construction stages. Importantly, report on time. So as I said earlier, you know, some of the major risks we are we're still encountering unreliable suppliers, service providers, and subcontractors. Many suppliers, unfortunately, when, before you sign on them, they give you, uh, you know, blue moon, they lovely promises, they, you know, they always convince us that we commit and we do this and that. But when it comes to delivery, they always encounter the problems. So uh, this is one of the major risks we have uh, also considered in our study. Obviously, uh, the market is not very steady in terms of uh, you know uh, pricing. Uh, many of the items uh, directly interrelated to the overseas supply, related to commodities and some special raw materials, for instance. The prices of those materials keep changing and the international market uh, subsequently that affect the selling price of the items. Now, these are the main uh, leader principles uh, 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 at uh, you know, planning, design and construction process. Uh, uh, in order to achieve value, we need to produce a series of uh, procedures and uh, instructions focusing on establishing the expected uh, value from the end uh, user's uh, standpoint, followed by, uh, you know, uh, you know, properly identifying uh, and defining process value stream or chain through uh, producing the most practical and functional process mapping. Uh, where we uh, looked at the different processes and uh, had a series of meetings, uh, investigations, studies, and we uh, produced, uh, you know, uh, the most practical and functional process mapping uh, that, uh, you know, led to elimination of waste and non-value adding activities. 
I must say that we have uh, applied uh, those uh, principles to uh, one department for the time being, that's road project department, and we use what we call enhanced contract, where uh, uh, lean construction principles have been uh, introduced into those con uh, contracts, and contractors need to implement them on the ground. Obviously, when it comes to process of flow, needed to be well controlled and a very holistic route. Uh, in one piece, continuous flow by synchronizing all activities. And that includes obviously considering some parallel activities, concurrent kind of engineering and uh, work, uh, and also going for some uh, value engineering as well. Now, sorry, uh, the poll uh, principle uh, is basically to do uh, uh, you know, with the overcoming risks and uncertainties of. Uh, pro uh, protracted and long-term uh, development and construction uh, process. We needed to have things uh, done uh, until needed, rather than you know doing them too early. So whenever uh, uh, you know a, a certain task is needed to be done, we, we we done it when it is needed in time. Now. Uh, at the planning stage, uh, it's important that uh, you needed to plan things uh, right from the beginning. And in order to do that, uh, there was great uh, you know, emphasis on, on collaboration. Okay, uh, we needed to look at the different parties uh, involved in the project development phases and how to get them all to collaborate to, uh, together. So uh, this was introduced in uh, a new process, which I'm going to share with you afterwards. And also uh, perform the right task and activity by the right people at the right time. It's very important. And uh, I'm sure some of you may have experienced working with uh, many government agencies, the feeling that they are not uh, working or living with the right uh, people. So we're always trying to improve by uh, you know, uh, engaging the right people and referring to certain uh, expertise from the market to support our design construction process. Now, uh, the members of the uh, design team and construction supervision team uh, can be co-located uh, simultaneously uh, in a de design uh, building, for instance, and design uh, the process of how it is going to be done. This is what we call basically concurrent engineering and the use of them was introduced into our operations uh, recently, I would say about a year ago, and it's ongoing to work now, overcoming many of the uh, problems we have encountered in the past. And there was a need to uh, have cross-functional teams, you know, for the uh, you know the sake of uh, you know verifications and checking. So we established uh, a chain of different teams uh, that collaborate on exchanging information and knowledge over aspects of design and uh, construction. And I'm going to show uh, you this later in the final slide, how this works basically. Now, it was very important for us to consider design and construction standardization. Uh, this is something very important. We have adopted in uh, our work as well. So by doing so, uh, the building information, uh, we uh, uh, managed to reduce construction effort and improve labor productivity as well and also uh, reduce fabrication cost and ensuring cost uh, effective operation and maintenance afterwards. These are the uh, some other elements also we have uh, considered. Uh, we always tend to aim for a target cost and not to exceed uh, the cost of uh, you know, our construction projects. I must say, uh, some people may think this is a wishful thinking, especially when it comes to uh, in the public sector, it's beyond control. But uh, I must say that uh, we have uh, managed over the past year and so to uh, finish some jobs uh, to budget and below uh, budget by adopting value engineering and work uh, uh, very well. Uh, okay, it's not uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, good satisfactory level, but uh, nonetheless, uh, it was a good start for us, to be honest. 
Now, uh, the next point is strategic partnering and uh, outsourcing, which is something uh, very commonly used now in construction industry. So we needed to build strategic partnering with a number of uh, reliable and credible suppliers and other vendors through a kind of uh, alliancing and framework agreements, for instance. Okay. And uh, considering uh, economy of scale, for instance, when it comes to volume of purchase supply, uh, contracts or framework agreement, we uh, achieve some good saving. And when it comes to uh, uh, those uh, framework uh, agreements and call off bases, materials can always be supplied and delivered just in time when needed. And that is one of the main uh, elements of uh, lean management. We are encouraging off site operations where you can uh, reduce activities on construction sites. Uh, so, thereafter, uh, minimize uh, construction uh, risks and also reduce uh, the number of labor on construction sites where many of the uh, elements, for instance, uh, fabricated uh, off-site and then uh, transported to site for installation straight away. So by doing this, we just uh, uh, minimize the activity inside when it comes to uh, for instance, concrete element, we even need to do any kind of ball works, for instance, and shuttering and the cast in situ activities, for instance, so the whole piece comes and just uh, put in place in minimum time. This is just an example. And in the market, there are many, many uh, different kinds of modular systems uh, where uh, lots of uh, you know, building materials uh, made off site and delivered to site installations. Okay, these are some of the critical success factors we have, uh, you know, uh, considered until developing the new process. Uh, planning and design teams uh, must be fully aware and well informed of all uh, planning uh, uh, and building uh, regulations. We needed to educate them. We needed to raise the bar of their knowledge and those, uh, and also share knowledge and experience uh, with uh, other uh, you know experts into uh, the market to, 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 to make sure that this design are made and delivered. Nonetheless, we needed to uh, also get our people to understand uh, the uh, requirements and needs of the different authoritative uh, uh, utilities uh, and departments, uh, you know, uh, in order to uh, minimize time uh, when every time it comes to uh, submittal of any request for uh, approval. Uh, well informed of all design data, construction standards and codes, as you know that uh, design data and construction standards codes keep changing into the market. Every day there is something. And I must say that our construction, uh, CS cutter construction specification needs updating. Now I believe my, our people working on new versions come up very soon, but for some reasons it hasn't come up. I don't know why, but uh, we needed to, 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 to uh, adjust and crop of the uh, latest changes into the construction industry is very important. So that we can't keep up using some uh, backdated or old uh, specification into our uh, uh, projects. Now, uh, uh, we needed to have also planning and design people to be updated with all the new construction methods, building technologies, and uh, functional or operational uh, systems. So it's very important to know what's into the market so the design team uh, work on something related to whatever uh, the latest technology in the market. Work out the proper design estimates. This has always been a problem for us, working out the most uh, nearest digit estimate, most realistic uh, estimates. So for that reason, we needed to front load resources with some partner uh, expert designers. Uh, so possible problems at construction stage can be eliminated. Eliminate. Now, again, as I said, you know, needed to apply concurrent and value engineering uh, between suppliers and contractors in space design and construction functions are adopted. Nonetheless, uh, also competition 
uh, you know, the cheap among those vendors thereafter we got the best competitive rates for the services and material you can find as well. At construction uh, stage, uh, our teams needed to have uh, in-depth knowledge and understanding of construction methods and mutual uh, resources. Leadership, this is something very important. We need to establish a strong leadership on the construction side. Thereafter, having the best project management practice side. And very important to also uh, work out the authority and stand control. Uh, to be built within the project teams. So everybody needed to know what they, they're doing, uh, he or she uh, doing in the country now. The roles are uh, responsibility needed to be defined of all parties. Uh, you know, the distribution of responsibility needed to work out. You couldn't possibly have uh, teams working together without knowing what they are doing. And uh, all members doing so many things at the same time and not knowing what their primary roles, roles and responsibilities in the construction side, which would definitely lead to miss. And also, uh, uh, we needed to uh, establish high level of uh, performance monitoring and control and time in the decision making and feedback. And for this uh, purpose, we're using latest technologies on dashboarding and project reporting and data capturing, and we are currently using live data capturing by using good tools. And we have uh, also uh, mobile applications for SWIFT decision making by live uh, data capturing and uh, reporting. It's very important to, as I said earlier, to have our people believing in training and uh, developing their skills. So uh, continuous uh, improvement is something uh, has become a must in our construction industry now. And as I said, we needed also to, to develop certain strategic partnering and relationship with the reliable and reputable suppliers and uh, contractors. We do have frameworks with some consultants. They provide uh, services uh, on obviously call-off uh, basis or through mini tender with uh, uh, fixed rates, uh, the well defined rates. And not only that, uh, those consultants, for instance, needed to go through a stringent uh, process of qualification to make it through to this stage. And then also, we needed to consider other forms of uh, contracts. Uh, as you may know, that in the past, uh, we always used the standard uh, for the grid book, 1999. Uh, but I must say now uh, we are having our own forms, uh, Ashgal 2018 uh, condition of contract. And we're talking here about 20 different forms covering uh, the different uh, procurement methods, uh, whether it's uh, traditional, design and build, turnkey, also covering professional services like engineering, uh, uh, architects, uh, professional services like uh, design. So the vision project management, we have uh, as well uh, contracts for supply of uh, services or materials, besides operation and maintenance as well on a long-term basis. Now, uh, these are some of the uh, continuous uh, improvement and performance uh, Measures we are considering uh, right, now, uh, right now. So we, we, we tend to plan things through investigating causes of the system deficiencies, any system or problems, analyze them and propose corrective or uh, sort of uh, modified plans. And then perform the uh, needful uh, testing uh, or perform pilot, pilot implementation of uh, the new proposed plan, do our own checking and examination, and assessment of the results of the test uh, for effectiveness. And thereafter, we uh, act it. Uh, if the outcome of the assessment is satisfactory, then the system can be adjusted and modified accordingly. But if it is not satisfactory, then obviously the plan uh, needed to be redefined 
and the cycle is repeated until satisfactory results are uh, achieved. Obviously, until uh, we get to uh, that stage where uh, we can have successful improvement, then obviously the new system becomes a standard. And this is what we've done. I mean, uh, you know, going back to uh, the original uh, stages of, uh, you know, project phases, uh, where there was an isolation line between the pre-stage and post-stage, we have developed this concept. As you can see here, it's built on uh, integration of design and construction on collaborative uh, relationship. And we established this platform uh, successfully on some of our projects, but it hasn't yet uh, been standardized for all our operations. But we perform this on certain jobs, especially with the uh, road project department, and it's proven to be uh, good. So as you can see here, we have the uh, planning and design team in the very top. And down here, we have the construction uh, teams. And as you can see, both teams working together closely, okay, on the project, uh, project uh, development. At the design stage, the experience of the construction teams are used, you know, referred to, because we believe that the construction teams know better about the latest construction technology and the uh, construct constructability of assets. So they give their feedback uh, to the design team so they can consider those new technologies in their design uh, work. Nonetheless, when it comes to, for example, certain uh, uh, specialized work, then like, uh, for example, healthcare facilities when it comes to considering uh, certain high tech, uh, medical equipment or do the design of the first fix or the provision work for them. So you can refer to professional expertise. Okay. And what's wrong with the, you know, referring to a specialist to suppliers and contractors to see what's uh, best available to the market. Uh, that's proven to be cost effective and very economical and very efficient in operation. All right, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And contractors can always help with proposing uh, the best construction methods and technologies available to the market. End user, we believe that end users have to be engaged and involved throughout, all the way from start, all the way to final handover when the whole thing is handed over to them. We tend now to get them engaged, or let me say, over many projects in the past, to get them involved at the handover. That's proven to be a big problem. So currently, uh, end users, and this has become a common standard of practice, mm -hmm. they get involved all the way from the beginning until then. And then we see the external stakeholders being engaged in as early as possible, like the civil defense, for instance, we get them engaged at the very early stage to get their feedback and comments on our design work. So later on, when it comes to uh, handing over an approval of whatever installed system it becomes easy for them to trace. And Thank you very much. This was my talk, and I'll be happy to answer any questions uh, related to my topic. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Uh, we appreciate the valuable uh, presentation and webinar you have given us today. I know that you tied up with more appointment after that one, so I was just trying to get a few questions from the floor, if you allow me. So, uh, Mohammed Abbas. Uh, the vice president of the AACE is saying after around three years of adopting the lean principles in Ajgal projects and imposing it as a contractual requirement, how you evaluate the outcome and is there is any plan to transfer this successful journey other sectors such as oil and gas? Well, I must say that uh, although there are uh, some good improvements to our uh, construction and process, I must say it's not to a satisfactory level, to be honest. I think the market is still lacking uh, sufficient and good knowledge on how uh, lean practices are implemented into the uh, construction projects. It's, it's a chain. For example, uh, an external stakeholder could ruin the whole work. Uh, when we talk about doing things just in time, you would expect also the uh, uh, other government uh, utility departments, for instance, to give you the approval on something on time. 
but some approvals take months, some approvals take three months, some, some more. But physically, when it comes to construction site, I think we have improved a lot in terms of reducing waste on our construction sites. There is no more, uh, you know, materials sticking on site unless there is a need yeah. for that. Okay, the process of approval has improved a lot. I think there is great savings, mainly to contractors, not to us. All right, health and safety practices improved a lot by having minimum number of staff or labor on site, only the, those you need for productivity improved a lot uh, and the like. And uh, thanks, Mohammed. Uh, please come to see me. We can discuss this further. <laughs> Bring your big boss with you. Thank you. Okay, last question because I'm not gonna, gonna take more than this because I know your time. Uh, I think it's a good one. The lean construction management can be helpful in EOT and additional cost claims and how to implement it for claims purposes. That's a good question to be honest. Now, uh, I'm currently working on uh, uh, what I call it uh, lean uh, dispute resolution or, or lean management and uh, and contract management, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Emphasizing primarily on uh, uh, live data capturing and reporting, okay. uh, you know, uh, disputes immediately, I mean, instantly without any delays. Because what happens, we tend to uh, avoid, uh, you know, resolving disputes when they, uh, you know, uh, emerge. And we tend to leave them until the very end. So by the end, uh, things could easily accumulate it and becomes too difficult. In one of the programs, by the time the program manager left, he left behind 777 unresolved disputes. That was really yeah. a big challenge for us. So when things are done just in time, instantly, without any delays, by considering green practices, you know, claims, uh, VOs, you name yeah. it, uh, you know, disputes over payments, can easily uh, be uh, settled and resolved uh, with good understanding amongst the different parties rather than waiting to refer those to third parties and the things get easily worse enough and more complicated. Yeah, well, perfect. Well, the, thank you so much, Ahmed, for, uh, for the wonderful uh, webinar you have delivered to us. Uh, you give an insight, actually, an insider insight from somebody who's implementing it on the ground in Ajdal and actually uh, also, Ahmad is a senior uh, and the senior uh, board uh, team of the of the lean construction in, in Qatar, um, um, as well as the also uh, the, the president of the Charter Institute of Arbitrators. So I think all is mixing together to serve as a such you. purposes. So thank you so much, Ahmad. Thank you, uh, all the attendees. Uh, as I said before, we will be sending you the slides in PDF format and with the um, the uh, attendees circuit very soon, inshallah. Thanks, Ahmed, again. Thank you, everyone. Have a Thank good you. Time. And uh, final Thank word, uh, if any of our guests uh, tonight have any questions or would like to sure. You know, sure. Sure. have any more information, please do not hesitate to write to me. The email is there. I'll be happy to respond to you. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ahmed. Have a good time. Yes.